There's one lot of evidence that shows we might be having a credit card worth of plastic every year through what yeah. we ingest to think of that, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Political Sandbox by Chamber. Um, for today's episode, we're joined by Fleur Anderson, the MP for Putney, Roehampton and Southfields. Um, my name is Megan. I'm a political campaigner at Greenpeace UK, working on plastic waste and um, waste export policy. Um, Greenpeace campaigns to tackle all elements of the global plastic crisis, um, from waste exports to radical reduction, but also exploring some of the solutions. And yeah, so I'm delighted to be joined with, by Fleur. Um, Fleur has a private member's bill, um, which is kind of going through Parliament at the moment, so that's what we're here to talk about, about wet wipes. Always happy to talk about <laughs> wet wipes, so it's great. It's Thanks for exciting. having me on. No Thank you. At all. So Fleur, tell us a little bit about your, your bill and some of the motivations that you had to, to kind of embrace this campaign yeah so first on the bill it's quite simple it's just to ban pla the production of wet wipes with plastic so ban mm -hmm. plastic in wet wipes mm -hmm. there's a huge amount of issues about plastic production as you're aware of as much as anyone else uh, but I chose just one part of it um, which is something that if it's done will make a huge difference so that was really motivating so that and I found out more after then looking into it so before the pandemic Mm -hmm. There were 11 billion wet wipes used in the UK okay. every year um, and, and it's just gone up as well a, a lot. Worldwide it's gone up so it's a really big issue mm -hmm. and I wanted to tackle something which would make a big difference. It was mm -hmm. put in, it also it needs government legislation as well mm -hmm. because although many of the wet wipe producers are moving to cut out plastic mm -hmm. so it is perfectly possible, yeah. um, they're just not going far enough and fast enough mm -hmm. really to stop the environmental damage that's being caused. And it's something that lots of consumers want to see. They want to do the right thing, Absolutely. but the labeling's really confusing. Mm -hmm. um, I have got four kids, so I used a lot of wet wipes myself. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to, use, to, to you know, you, I don't want to stop people using wet wipes, mm -hmm. but if the government could make sure plastic is cut out, that would make a big difference. So it's something that is having a huge environmental impact as well on, I'm a river MP, so I'm the MP for Putney. Got the beautiful River Thames coming mm -hmm. through there, but on the banks of the River Thames, it's just littered with wet wipes, which is dreadful, and they just yeah. do not disintegrate. And finding out that they're made of plastic uh, and that that could be er eradicated mm -hmm. um, is, is a big motivator. Um, and then the other thing about all the sewage sewers being blocked Absolutely. as well. Mm -hmm. So across the country, there are 350,000 okay. blockages every year. Oh, no. it, co it costs all our water companies a huge amount of money to clear mm -hmm. them, but that gets passed on to consumers yeah. as well. So there's lots of reasons for tackling it. There's a lot of ways mm -hmm. it could be tackled um, and the government could take action. And then what led me to do it was I was on the Environment Bill Committee. Mm -hmm. So that's just about 17 MPs that sit down and go through the Environment Bill line by line. We put in so many amendments on the Labour side mm -hmm and none of them were taken up and it was really frustrated. So I, I didn't want to leave it there. I wanted to, to push on to, to ask for more action. And that was why I've gone for this. Oh, that's really, that's really interesting. So the government have just, they've just finished consulting um, on banning certain items. So they kind of um, commonly listed items like uh, plastic cutlery. Do you think that they might have missed an opportunity with that consultation? So actually that was the first thing that's come out of this bill. Although the bill's sort of going through mm -hmm. Parliament and in itself it probably won't get adopted as a bill because it hasn't come from the government. Mm -hmm. Even by doing this, I've ma managed to get some kind of change because there was this consultation was already being put out. The Environment mm -hmm. Bill was agreed and then there was a consultation on some plastic items. Mm -hmm. But then the government looked again and I've met with ministers and they've looked again and they I had another consultation um, the call for evidence on commonly listed, littered items, mm -hmm. which has got not a very catchy title. <laughs> but I think that was a recognition that there wasn't enough consultation going on mm -hmm. and wet wipes came under that. So I'm glad that that was put in, even though it was a bit late, it, yeah. was, it was added in. Um, so I hope to see what the results of that are going to be. So you mentioned they've got plastic in them. So microplastics is a massive issue. What have you kind of learned about microplastics um, in, in the, over the course of your campaigning within the wet wipes? I think there's kind of a, there's, there's just general awareness that David Attenborough's Blue Planet and of other course. things there's awareness about microplastics but I didn't realize how pervasive they are how much they they go out into the, the rivers and the seas and then they come back 
into our digestive systems mm -hmm. as well. There's one lot of evidence that shows we might be having a credit card worth of plastic every year through what yeah. we ingest to think of that's horrible. Mm -hmm. um, I know that um, the Marine Conservation Society have done investigations into the fish in the River Thames. So ten, seven out of 10 flounder fish they found with plastic in mm -hmm. their stomachs and that plastic fills up their stomachs and then they can't eat and that's why they die of starvation. And this is having an impact on 100 million marine animals every year. I mean, that's just, that's just yeah. a mind blowing figure that I don't, we, we, it sort of goes unseen. I don't think we know about the impact really, Absolutely. but we know it is very big. It's mm. all across our oceans and rivers and that plastic will never break down. Mm. So we can't keep putting that into the rivers and oceans and damaging not only marine life, but also our own health as well. Absolutely. I mean, there's so much to know about microplastics that we don't know yet. Like, I think there's, there needs to be so much more research as well. I think that's it's a, a massive part of everything. So what kind of things are there already for, the, for being flushable um, in terms of wet wipes? I know that the um, manufacturers are not kind of taking up the fine to flush, for example. Can you tell us a little bit more about kind of the context around wet wipes and being flushable and not being flushable and kind of other options that are available to people? I think anyone who's been to a supermarket, you go and you, if you want to be interested and you want to do the right thing, you'd start looking at labels and you find it's really confusing. Have mm -hmm. you been to the supermarket yeah. to see that? Well, yeah, absolutely, because it says there's fine to flush on the back, but I know that actually if they are fine to flush, that it might not necessarily be that they're fine to flush. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that water companies are encouraging people not to flush them down at all. They kind of say they need to go to landfill, but that is kind of in itself very unsustainable as well. We need to kind of be thinking about how do we switch people's mindsets to kind of more of a circular economy rather than single use. But yeah. obviously, as, as you say, it's very, it, we've kind of got a bit of a single use uh, mm. culture and it's very easy and we don't want to be criticizing people who are trying to do the right thing um, so I guess do you have any thoughts how have your kind of constituents been um, reacting to um, the bill and do, do you speak to your constituents a lot about wet wipes I do speak to them a lot okay. about wet wipes <laughs> there's an unusual amount of interest in Putney but I, th I think there's a lot of interest across the UK actually and I think people do say that it's confusing mm. this fine to flush actually we shouldn't be flushing wet wipes at mm. all um, but the water companies have got together and they've said well you know people are going to flush them so how can we make it better if they do so mm -hmm. they've got standards where they don't the fine to flush standards don't have plastic in them so okay. already so that's yeah. already pushing the industry towards mm -hmm. moving away from using plastic mm -hmm. um, but but even so it's no good to flush any of the wet wipes so mm -hmm. it is it is confusing and and people find it that in, mm -hmm. but I do talk about this in schools this morning I was in a primary yeah. school and I was giving this as an example of what I was doing about the environment because school children are so interested in the environment in fact that's that's how I got into environmentalism mm -hmm. when I was 12 I became a vegetarian and I started looking into vegetarianism and into recycling and all those kind of things and it's never left me and here I am doing this and I can see the same thing um, in in children as well um, in Putney schools it comes up a lot but there's a huge amount of support from people yeah. who find the same thing that we found when you go to a supermarket it's really really confusing mm -hmm. So it's not only banning plastic in wet wipes, it's also getting across that message of don't flush wet yeah. wipes. Try not to use so many. Don't mm. use single use wet wipes just for cleaning the kitchen and this mm. kind of thing. That's how they're being marketed more yeah. and more. Um, and then also let's change the labeling as well. Mm. And that's something that I've been calling on the government to do. Yeah. Do you think that, I mean, kind of going beyond this bill, do you, would you say that industry should be playing a responsibility or playing a large role for the education and kind of getting that message out? Like I've seen some people discuss how uh, wet wipes, there should be pictures of them a little bit like cigarettes, like pictures of them washed up or like a fat burg yeah, or something like yeah. that on the front of labeling. Do you think that, because as you say, people want to make the right decision and education is so important. Do you, that the industry should probably play a role. Do you think they should play a role in that? Yes, and I think that's what the bill is all about, really. It puts the onus back onto industry rather mm -hmm. than being on the consumer to try and work it out. And also challenging the industry to pay the costs of their pollution, mm -hmm. that the polluter should pay that mm -hmm. principle. Because at the moment, they, they, uh, the, they can get away with making a huge amount of profit and not having to give any of that profit to the education about mm -hmm. how to use them, although the evidence of the misuse of them is there for everyone to see, mm -hmm. but also about the cleanup costs as well. That's all yeah. being put onto water companies. Um, and also great conservation organisations like Thames 21 volunteers mm -hmm. who go up picking up the wet wipes mm -hmm. 
why should they be having to pay for this rather than the producers of those wet wipes? It is it is a challenge to the industry to say they should be part of it. Mm -hmm. And in terms of that, yeah, pictures, horrible pictures, <laughs> or using the same ideas from the cigarette industry, isn't it? It's saying, yeah. how can we change behavior? So people have had ideas about actually printing on the wet wipe, do not yeah. flush. Um, that might be a way to do it. Um, yeah, all of those yeah. ideas, I think, I hope that that is what the government are going to really look into now. Um, they're going to look into the res responses from the consultation and say, right, how can we change behavior? How can we do this better? Ultimately, how can we stop this going out into the mm. environment? So Greenpeace are campaigning at the moment for, as as, the, as mentioned, the Environment Act is now um, in law, and the government will be looking at targets to kind of reduce the number of plastic waste. Um, and w like, do you think that the government can go further than just banning individual items? And should they kind of be setting a target to try and really radically uh, reduce the amount of plastic completely? in the first place. There absolutely should be ambitious targets set by government. That should be its role mm -hmm. um, because we know that we've been complacent for too long. There hasn't been enough action, so we've got a lot of catching up to do. So I think setting targets on plastic use, setting targets on planting trees as well, mm. setting targets on biodiversity, setting targets on air quality, all of these things are going to be very important. And mm -hmm. the government has said it's going to set some of these targets. So I think the next stage of following the environment bill, now it's become an act, the Environment Act, mm -hmm. is really follow up on what are those targets going to be, who is going to then enforce these targets, Absolutely. are they going to be reported on year by year by year so we can see if we're making any progress to meeting those targets. Mm -hmm. There's so much to do now to, to make sure the Environment Act is put in place, but I think there's so much missing from the Environment Act as well. Um, so yeah, pushing on both fronts really. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you mentioned that you were part of the Environment Bill um, Committee. Um, has your bill been, uh, how has it been kind of received across the house, kind of in including kind of your colleagues on the um, government benches or kind of backbench conservative MPs? Has, has it got quite cross party support, would you say? It has, and that's something, there's been something really good about it. I don't think, as an opposition MP, we can be putting forward that kind of constant total opposition but it's really nice to be able to work together across party on something we can change together and that's what I've um, what's been very good about mm -hmm. doing this so immediately all the sponsors co-sponsors of the bill with me are from all the different parties of mm -hmm. the house which has been fantastic and I didn't have to strong arm anyone I didn't have to <laughs> twist anyone's arm do do that like that. <laughs> it was literally like, I'm doing this would you like to support it? yes Okay. MPs have been so supportive. Um, mm -hmm. 74 MPs have signed up to support it and shared it on social media, held up a sign saying ban plastic and wet wipes, have mm. been really supportive and they are cross party. Also the Environmental Audit Committee, which is a cross party select committee, they have um, supported this bill as in the rec recommendations of a recent report that they wrote as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it absolutely has cross party support and the Minister is supporting it as well when I've met with her too. So it does have cross-party support. It is the bill that no one dislikes. Um, yeah. It's not controversial. It's just going to be now in the detail of how it's put into action. I mm -hmm. think that's going to be where we might have some um, arguments maybe about pushing it forward. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it should happen, I mean, there are so many P MPs who have rivers in their constituency. Yeah. They are beach constituencies. I mean, whatever it is, they can see the impact of this. And so that's why they've immediately said yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. no, that's, I mean, it's brilliant. Um, it's, it's great to hear. It's good to see when you hear MPs working together, it's, it's really important. Um, I guess, yeah, I'd like to ask about, the, one of the issues when we're thinking about the whole of the, the waste system is that if you ban certain materials or polymers, then there's always the risk that um, they, it will cause, the, you know, the switch might be to another material which yeah. might cause more environmental damage yeah. that you weren't aware of, you know, mm. like biodegradable um, options exist, but it actually might, cause um, unintended consequences. So I guess, um, how do you think that, I mean, we, we've talked about the industry taking responsibility to that kind of switch to a more circular economy, but do you think mm. there could be options for reuse? I think reuse is, is something that we always try and encourage people to do, like reuse, reuse, um, before recycle. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, what, yeah. Do you think that there are other kind of reuse options that we could be 
talking about. I mean, to be the most environmentally sound, it would be much better not to use wet wipes at all. Yeah. Um, but uh, why don't we use cloth? And so many people have said to me, why are you even talking about wet wipes? I think it's just a very practical solution on the way to, uh, to, the, to being the best outcome, which would be to not have this, so much single use of any item mm. really at all. So yes, that's one issue. Also, the unintended consequences that I'm really looking into is also what we would put in instead of plastic mm. and making sure. So if it's bamboo is one of those yeah. that could be put in or cellulose from wood, is the wood from a sustainable source, mm. is actually bringing all of the materials over around the world, actually outweigh the uh, environmental nice. benefits. All of that has absolutely got to be looked into, mm -hmm. which is why I really welcome the fact that we've had a big consultation. The government's launched that consultation, has had it actually closed mm. quite recently to look into those questions because I definitely don't want to make sure, you know, do one thing mm. that sounds great, sounds easy, sounds simple, but actually is not having uh, the consequences that we, we want to see environmentally, mm -hmm. but also in terms of health outcomes as well. So lots of wet wipes are used for infection control. Mm. So I've been talking to lots of healthcare providers about their use of wet wipes. About 10% of wet wipes are used in the NHS. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be the same level of infection control, mm -hmm. um, but just using a different um, material, um, which doesn't have the long lasting effect that it has. So all of those unintended consequences absolutely have to be looked into to make sure we get it right. Yeah, definitely. So uh, what's next for the campaign, I guess, is the next question. <laughs> yeah, well, it's still being read mm -hmm. in Parliament, which only means it's on a yeah. list every now and again on a Friday. Mm -hmm. It's on a list and it gets read out and then it gets opposed. Um, so I had my chance to explain everything um, in Parliament at the end of last year. And then now it just the second reading keeps coming up. Mm -hmm. um, but it will probably, this will carry on for a while. So there are three ways actually this could be put into legislation or brought to life. Mm -hmm. um, one is through the Environment Act, as we've mm -hmm. been talking about. So there's a single use plastic as aspect of it. That's primary legislation. The next stage will be the secondary legislation, which is actually putting it into directives mm -hmm. that would say to the industry, you have to phase it out by this date um, and then it will be regulated. So that's one way. The other way is using the Environmental Protection Act so that was brought in in 1990, mm -hmm. but still has been ever since then having updates every now and mm -hmm. again with extra additions. Now this could be an addition to the Environmental Protection Act. Mm -hmm. So that's another option. Um, and another a final, so those would be good. They'd be hard and fast. They'd be telling the industry what they have to do and when. Mm -hmm. Another option, which is not legislative, so it's kind of easier mm -hmm. to do and faster to do, would be to use um, British standards. So the BSI kite mark, yeah. but so that's quicker to do but it would be voluntary for the industry yes. to take up that as a British standard to say the British standard for wet wipes doesn't have plastic in mm -hmm. it's another way to do it um, but I yeah uh, that would be my third option yes, <laughs> really but voluntary yeah. things quite often don't so you kind of need no. that legislative yes. action yeah um, yeah that's it's that's kind of what we've seen with the fine to flush element, right. isn't it? That yes. I think it's something like eight out of ten still aren't fine to flush because it's it's harder for the for the manufacturers um, to to, to yeah. take on. I think until they have to do it, then mm. it's just not going to go far enough. Yeah, mm, absolutely. So I'm interested to know why mm -hmm. Greenpeace focuses on. Plastic campaigning as well. So yes. what, yeah, why um, do so you? All, well, plastics is obviously something that is causing so much environmental problem. Plastic specifically, as well as kind of all unsustainable, um, like uh, unsustainable um, practices, such as kind of it's not just plastic, as we were saying. There are other things that are bad, but plastics specifically because of the microplastics issue is, is really huge. But when you think about the whole system, we're producing so much in, the, in this country. The UK produces, I think, the second um, amount of plastic per person in the whole world um, behind America. And quite often what we're doing is single use stuff. It's what we were talking about earlier. Um, it's, it's stuff that you, know, you use once and then you, and you discard. Um, and a massive issue that we're trying to shine a light on is the issue of waste exports. Um, so we did an investigation last year and we've, we've, been, we've been working on waste exports for quite a while because it's UK plastic waste that usually ends up somewhere like Malaysia mm -hmm. or Turkey. Um, so we're campaigning for, for a ban on the UK exporting its plastic waste. Um, so because it's, it's illegal for um, the UK to export plastic waste which is not going to go and be recycled 
but quite often it's going to countries where there's quite a high risk of um, waste crime, such as right. So it's a big places. loophole. So it's yeah. supposed to only go to countries where it's going to be recycled, but actually yes. they don't recycle. And it all the, time. the government includes the waste that it's exported in its recycling figures. So our recycling figures actually look quite good, oh. but we don't know that it's. You don't necessarily know for right. for sure what's happened to it, and when we talk about kind of producer responsibility in, in terms of the wet wipes stuff for all producers they don't really the way that the the system is you don't actually need to know that it's been recycled responsibly in another country once it's once it's been exported it's been mm. exported so this is causing massive problems for um local people um and local wildlife and obviously just nature and it's just it's it's kind of a, a waste colonialism in a way if it's the uk sending of plastic waste somewhere else um to out of sight out of mind mm. so we really want to we're shining a light on that um but i guess the main solution is just a massive radical reduction which is kind of yes. what yeah. we really yeah. really need because you know it would make our recycling systems work better um and yes investment in kind of solutions is really important when it comes to recycling but really it, the emphasis should be on production rather than kind of what happens yeah. so boris johnson was kind of went on about how um it's much more important to reduce rather than recycle and then it kind of caused a bit of a, a discussion about recycling because obviously we still want to be encouraging people to recycle because it's really really important that people know exactly what they're doing but it's actually it was quite welcome that he was yes, he actually was reducing saying, from the start yeah, yeah because true. because yeah. that kind of it's a bit of a it's not a false solution but it's kind of an over egged solution in a way um to kind of just talk about um recycling rather than ch behavior change but really industry change is is what's yeah. what's needed um so a while ago i was mm. i was one of those people pla campaigning mm. on use of plastic bags in the supermarkets mm. and it was kind of said well what else would you use i mean the mm. world's going to fall apart if you can't use plastic bags but yeah. you could see by that you know adding that 5p mm. making that difference um, people can change their behavior yeah. it's just it's finding that way to change mm -hmm. it yes. um, and then the industry has to catch up and has to mm -hmm. do it um, and that, that absolutely should be there's so much plastic in all our packaging that you go to other yeah. countries as you say we're the second highest mm -hmm. other countries it's not like that yeah um, definitely yeah. in Europe <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's, it's also worth talking about the deposit return scheme I think when we talk about reuse when it comes to kind of wet wipes um, we really do need a, a deposit return scheme for, for bottles and cans and the government has, has been very, um, just keeps pushing, kicking the, yes. kicking the can it's down the road. The <laughs> it is in the yeah. Environment Act, it yeah. should come, but when is it going to come when in is it will be the question. Yes. So yeah. it's worth us all really looking at what the government does as mm. the next steps and actually making sure that they follow up on the things they're going to say, they've said they will do, mm -hmm. but then um, pushing them to do more. Yeah. yeah. Would you say that the pandemic has changed attitudes around plastic at all? Because we were, because the, mm. when DEFRA was kind of consulting on the deposit return scheme, we were not very happy that the kind of consultation questions were a little bit like, do you still want this? There's been a pandemic, but actually I think, well, we, I mean, I've just answered the, qu <laughs> answered the question. What think? <laughs> well, what we think is that, you know, people are at home, they're kind of surrounded by stuff a lot more. It's kind of becoming a lot more, um, a lot more present when you're kind of surrounded by plastic waste but do you, have you noticed any kind of difference in attitudes um well in terms of wet wipes use has gone up mm. because of covid so everyone's using it to wipe down any surface anywhere and mm -hmm. having a packet of plastics uh, plastic wet wipes mm -hmm. is just everywhere now yeah. and that kind of single use so mm -hmm. being much more aware of infection control mm -hmm. and wanting to be cleaner mm -hmm. actually is mit and yes yeah, it's going against Mm -hmm. stopping use of wet wipes or single use so mm -hmm. that's not so good but in terms of yeah mm -hmm. being at home more and thinking about packaging but also we order probably we order online more and that mm -hmm. comes with a whole host of packaging yeah. so again that's up to pushing the online providers to reduce mm -hmm. their packaging because I don't think people want it people don't want swathes of packaging to come yeah. with everything that arrives mm -hmm. um, and so I think and you can see that people have complained about that and they've changed the packaging mm -hmm. it's happening already so consumers do have power in this mm -hmm. it's not all up to government at all we can do things along the way mm -hmm. and then when they're coupled with 
the government putting in the legislation to enforce it, then it really works. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's what we could see in lots of different aspects of yeah. plastic. So I'm really glad Greenpeace is campaigning at it. I have <laughs> lots of Greenpeace supporters write to me a I lot. And every time they write to me, I think it's great. I think I'm good glad. for you, good for mm -hmm. you that you've seen a campaign, you've thought, I want to take action. So you've mm -hmm. written to your MP and I just cheer everyone along that's that writes to me mm -hmm. as a result of getting being part of the, yeah. the campaign. I think people power is massive in political campaigning because obviously MPs represent their constituents. They kind of definitely want yeah. to, if, 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 it, if it matters to them, it, it, it has to matter to the MP. Mm. Um, I guess, yeah, do you have any kind of advice for anyone wanting to, to lobby their MP on plastic um, as, as the receiver? Yes, well, okay, so what am I asking for myself? Well, I would say don't do write to your MP. It absolutely mm -hmm. matters. I read everyone's emails that come to me and it really matters. Mm. Um, and also, you could go and see your MP in a surgery, mm. and I have. You don't have to wait until you've got a housing issue. It doesn't have to be that kind of issue. You can come and talk to me about an issue that matters to you. And people do come and talk to me about wet wipes and about mm -hmm. lots of policy issues mm. as well. Things that are that, that I can speak up about in Parliament. And you can go and talk to your MP in mm. a surgery, and I'll take that opportunity um, to do so. Um, and also join up with others locally as well to, to join up in a group whatever that is. And there are lots of different groups. They could be, a, there are church groups, um, groups. I was in a synagogue yesterday talking about social responsibility. Join up with others wherever you are um, and then go to your MP because there's strength in numbers, as yeah. you say. And also you can keep each other going. Mm -hmm. And then I think for all my campaigning that I've always, I've done for years, I think about 90% of campaigning success is about persistence. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to just write once to your MP. Yeah. Go back and say, well, what did you do about that? And then go back again and say, what's happening now? I mean, I don't want to be deluged. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's just part of campaigning is to keep going. Mm -hmm. So um, Greenpeace has been keeping going with so many campaigns yeah. for so many years. Mm -hmm. I will keep going with wet wipes mm -hmm. um, for as long as it takes. And I think that's really important to do as well. So wow, yeah, that's great. I mean, as a backbench MP, what do you, how do you think Labour can kind of show leadership and kind of be pushing the government further? Is, is there anything specifically you'd like to be kind of seeing from your from um, your kind of colleagues in the in the shadow DEFRA team, um, not just wet wipes, yeah. <laughs> not just limited to. Well, I work very much with our um, shadow environment team. They're mm -hmm. really brilliant, and um, so that's what a lot of they've been really supportive of the wet wipe campaign. But there's all these other aspects of cam of pushing on the Environment Act that we were talking about mm -hmm. already. So that is setting the air quality standards and targets, and what are we going to do about that? It's food standards, mm -hmm. so a really big issue. Um, also. Um, water and um, cleaning up our water cleaning up our water systems mm. um, and then working together with farmers there's so many different aspects mm. to the whole defra um, brief mm -hmm. but i think the environment act making sure it works uh, and also pushing more but then all these opportunities with brexit opportunities mm. with brexit i think the environment act should have been our opportunity to say we'll set the minimum standards at the level of European standards as we left and then, Brexit, yeah. and then we'll go up from it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was involved in campaigning for a lot of those standards to be set with organisations that I was working with and different campaigns. And to see that the government didn't accept that, mm -hmm. really, really disappointing. So I, in every way, I hope we do not regress from mm -hmm. those standards that were set by the EU in food standards and environmental standards and labour standards mm -hmm. in so many ways. So. These, these, this is what we can be doing now, this is what the Labour Party is doing now to say actually we should be doing more and pushing the government, mm -hmm. but also to set those alternatives as well. So that's mm -hmm. a really strong role for Labour now to be saying actually there's a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. When Rachel Reeves said she would be the first Green Chancellor, that's the ambition yeah. that we should have for ourselves as a country, mm -hmm. that environment should be written across all of our governmental mm -hmm. policies and this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And I think the Labour policy manifestos have shown that they're not just a one chapter on the environment and then other things, mm -hmm. but actually it's written throughout all the policies. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really encouraged to see what we're setting as really ambitious environmental policies for mm -hmm. a future Labour government. Okay. Do you do you think that you know with COP26 being over now, um, do you think we've got a, the light is not being shone on the environment as much in, on the political space. It, like, how, how does it feel in Parliament? If Boris Johnson was trying to really make this kind of a big moment um, and now it's kind of over. Do you... Yeah, I think you're right. It's, yeah. it's, it's less of a profile now. I think there are fewer civil servants working on it. Mm -hmm. So that's one way to get to, to show, is the government putting its money where its mouth is? 
does it have civil servants working on it? Is it putting a budget together to support it? And it's it's not doing that. I know um, in Scotland, um, the Scottish government are really following up from it mm. um, because they were the host and they want to see that happening. And that should be the same across Britain. Mm -hmm. Why would it just be Scotland? So. Um, it is disappointing to see that it's going down the agenda. So I hope that campaigns like this one mm -hmm. um, and talking about wet wipes is one example of, it's, it's a way of saying, actually, we can do more. Here's an example of it and, and gathering so much support for it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll keep the government on its toes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Fleur, for speaking with us today. Um, it's been really, really great um, to kind of get your thoughts on um, wet wipes and your campaign. And it's been exciting to hear um, your plans for the campaign, but also environment more widely. Um, oh, it's great to be here. I always talk about wet wipes um, and it'll be really good to see where it goes from here. So glad to have so much public support and thanks very much for interviewing me today. It's no been problem. Great. Thanks.